Hi, this is Ken Johnson. I'm a demographer at the University of New Hampshire at the Carson School of Public Policy. And I want to talk briefly about a new data snapshot that was just released last week based on new census data. And it finds that the population of the United States grew at the lowest rate in the last year that it has in 100 years. The last time that the growth of the American population was so small was during the flu epidemic of 1919. And so let me give you a feel for what's going on. I'm particularly interested in how births and deaths are changing and the implications that has for what we call natural increase or natural decrease in the United States. So let's take a look at a couple of slides. So this is the this is the long-term pattern of births and deaths in the United States. You can see the baby boom of the 1950s and 60s, and then the ups and downs of births uh, since then, and the steady increase in the number of deaths in the United States. From about one and a half million to last year, it was 2.8 million deaths. So the number of deaths in the United States has steadily increased as the population ages. Births have bounced up and down, but the period I'm most interested in is the most recent period, that is since 2007 when the Great Recession hit. The impact of the Great Recession on US demographic trends has been substantial, particularly on births, and it is sustained. That is, it has continued to affect the patterns of births and deaths in the United States. Whereas migration, which was adversely affected by the recession, has now gone back to its normal trends of migration patterns in the United States, but births have not. And as a result, there's been changes, important changes in the demographic patterns in the United States. And that's the focus of this new brief. Here's the patterns of births and deaths in the United States since 2005. You can see the uptick in births that occurred at the time, just before the Great Recession. And then once the Great Recession impacted US birth rates, there's been a steady decline in the number of births in the United States. The number of births now is at the lowest level it's been uh, since the mid 1980s and the number of deaths continue to rise. That gap between births and deaths is what we call natural increase. It's the difference between the number of births in the United States and the number of deaths in the United States. And that number uh, is now at the lowest level it's been in at least 50 years. There were only about uh, 950,000 more births than deaths in the United States last year. Immigration in the United States is also down. Uh, and so as a result, with a smaller surplus of births over deaths and less immigration to the United States, the US population grew at its lowest rate, as I said before, 1.5 million, that it's grown in the last 100 years. Now, as the number of births rise and the number of deaths, I'm sorry, as the number of births diminish and the number of deaths grow, the growth rate of the US population slows down. Let's take a look at how this came to be. Now, as you can see from this graphic, three, three things are important. The number of women of childbearing age. And in fact, the number of women of childbearing age in the United States is actually higher now by about 4% than it was in 2007 when the fertility rates were very high. So the decline of the number of births in the United States is not a function of fewer women of childbearing age. It's a function of lower fertility among the women of childbearing age. And you can see that very clearly in this graphic, while the number of women of childbearing age is actually increased by about 4%, the number of births in the United States has diminished by 12% and the fertility rate has diminished by an even greater 14%. The fertility rate in the United States now is the lowest of any we have ever seen in the time for which we have data. So we have the lowest fertility rates in US history. And as a result, even though there are more women of childbearing age, there are fewer births. So what impact has that had on the US? 
This is my estimate of how many births there would have been had births continued at the fertility rates of 2007 at the time of the Great Recession and how many births we actually have. And so the red line at the top shows you how many births we would have be having in the United States over 4.6 million births if the fertility rates of 2007 had been sustained and the population of women of childbearing age had increased as it has. In contrast, we only have about 3.8 million births last year in the United States, a gap of almost 700,000. If we take the accumulated declines in births over the last decade, we find that there are about 5.7 million fewer births in the United States over the last decade than we would have expected had fertility rates remained high. So in other words, that's a lot of empty kindergarten classrooms. That's a lot of empty maternity wards. And eventually it's gonna be fewer working age populations in the United States. So this decline in fertility has significant implications for US demographic trends. It also has implications for local areas within the United States. This shows you how many US counties have more deaths than births. That's what we call natural decrease. Natural decrease is when the number of deaths exceed the number of births. So over the last nine years, some counties have had no years in which they had more deaths than births. And that, those are the gray areas of the country. You can see in the big urban areas of the United States and in the West where there's a lot of population increase going on, you can see that there are a significant number of counties which have uh, more births than deaths in every year. In contrast, there are the red counties are counties where the number of deaths exceeded the number of births in every single year from 2010 to 2019. So to experience natural decrease, to have fewer babies born than older people dying, reflects a demographic phenomenon that communities have trouble recovering from. An area which has had natural decrease in one year is likely to continue to have natural decrease in the future. 90% of the counties on this graphic that experienced natural decrease at all have experienced multiple years of it. And you can see in between those two extremes are counties that have had just one to four years of natural decrease or five to eight years of natural decrease. So there are more counties, 46% of all US counties had more deaths than births last year. Half, essentially half of all US counties had more deaths than births. Primarily because the number of births have diminished, but in many of these areas, the population is older and as a result, more people are reaching the ages where mortality is also high. So in general, we find that the counties which have natural decrease, particularly persistent natural decrease, tend to have more older adults, fewer women of childbearing age, and relatively low fertility. So in a sense, those three things together tend to produce natural decrease. Now, the United States as a whole has never had natural decrease. The state of New Hampshire had it for the first time three years ago. The state of Vermont also had it for the first time three years ago. Maine has had it for several more years. And West Virginia has had natural decrease for a number of years. Those are the only US states to have ha ever had natural decrease. And two of the four began to have it just in the last couple of years. So natural decrease at the state level is very unusual. We have never had natural decrease in the United States as a whole in all the history of the country. Now, when you consider that we have, we're having fewer births right now and the number of deaths is growing, this has significant implications for the future of many of these counties and states. And on top of that, we now have the coronavirus, which is going to affect the population as well perhaps significantly increasing the number of deaths in the next year, according to epidemiological projections. So in a sense, we have a demographic perfect storm. We have fewer births, 
we have more deaths. And then on top of that, we have a pandemic hitting the United States. So the combination of those things have significant implications for the future of the US population. And if you'd like to see more about this, you can certainly download the um, data snapshot that I published last week based on new census data, which was only released on Thursday. That's downloadable from the CARSI website without charge. If you're interested in more of the details of how this came to be the case, there are a number of other uh, data snapshots which are also available on the CARSI website. So thank you very much.